What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are picking back up again with Invincible. Now we're covering all of volume 17 here, but there's a very particular reason for that, right? Normally we would split it up to make them easier to kind of ingest all the information that's happening, but this is a really, really important one, right? This one is the betrayal of Monster Girl. So one of the things that happens here, and this is kind of a crazy situation, is that one, you actually end up learning that Dinosaurus is alive. <laughs> <laughs> the dinosaurs was believed to have been dead. Now, this comes during the events when essentially Adam Eve runs up on Freddie Mercury, right? Because with Mark basically disappearing, right? Mark not being here and Adam Eve, of course, knowing this is where he was last seen as what is in effect his wife, basically. I mean, she's his girlfriend, but might as well be his wife. That what's going on here is she wants to know where Mark is, right? And so, of course, we know that a fight broke out between dinosaurs and Freddie Mercury and that basically dinosaurs had no real choice but to start detonating parts of the ship of the Viltrumites in order to engineer an escape for himself and Mark. And that Dinosaurus essentially was believed to have been dead when he crash landed on Earth. But when Adam Eve runs up on Freddie Mercury and then demands to know where Dinosaurus is, Freddie Mercury basically lies. And he's like, oh, I mean, you know, it was like his, his friend showed up here and attacked and, uh, and, and then left with him. And I have no idea what's going on, right? You know, just, if you want to know where Dinosaur, or you want to know where Mark is, go, go find his friend, right? Go find that Dinosaurus guy. And so following that, you switch over to Mark himself, right? Now, Mark, of course, again, is kind of recovering from the Scourge virus. And the idea is that eventually what happened when they arrived on Earth is that dinosaurs had just kind of grunted a little bit and then seemingly passed out and reverted back into his human form. And as you guys know, when it comes to the human form of dinosaurs, the only way to bring dinosaurs back is to basically just bore the hell out of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way to make it work. And so, of course, that's exactly what Mark does. While that's happening, Adam Eve actually hits up Alan the Alien and Oliver, as well as basically Zandale, right? The fake invincible at the moment, and then tells them what's going on, right? Like they need to go find Mark. And so when Mark just starts boring the hell out of out of this guy and basically brings back dinosaurs, as soon almost immediately after that happens, Mark, of course, asks the question, why did General Thrag try to kill me? Like, what's going on? And dinosaurs doesn't really have much in the way of answers. Remember, he didn't really even get any any answers. And so he's being honest here for the most part when he tells Mark, like, I do not know why Freddie Mercury tried to kill you. Like, I don't really know exactly why that happened. But what you end up getting here is, of course, Zandale and then Oliver and uh, and Alan the Alien, who all show up here attacking dinosaurs. And for the most part, of course, dinosaurs, again, is basically a good guy here. But as you would expect, he basically defends himself. Now, as to the question, how did this guy survive? We're given a cool answer here that whenever some kind of catastrophe takes place, right? Dinosaurs is injured or whatever. He reverts back into his human form. When he turns back into dinosaurs, he basically heals from all his injuries, right? So that's how he has like his claws back and things along those lines because he completely and totally heals. Now, I imagine there's a limit to that, right? So like if he reverts back to his human form and then his human form is killed, then dinosaurs won't be able to reemerge, right? He'll basically stay dead. But in the midst of this whole fight, Mark tries to calm everything down. He punches Alan the alien and in doing so, totally shatters his arm. And so at this moment right now, Mark is powerless, right? He has no no abilities whatsoever. He can't fly. He doesn't have super strength, nothing, right? He is exceedingly weak. Now, this is when things get cool because while all that's going on and Mark is basically recovering, you end up having this invasion where essentially the Thraxan race returns. Now, from the perspective of Monster Girl and, uh, and, and really Rex, which is basically just robot, from their perspective, this shouldn't be possible right? The Thraxans should be completely and totally gone, or at least a neutralized threat. They shouldn't really be here anymore. In the midst of all that, once this, this Thraxan invasion basically launches, that you have what looks like kind of a head honcho who emerges, only for him to basically refer to Rex and Monster Girl as basically being their son, right? Or at least being the son of, of Monster Girl. And so the question is, how in the world did Monster Girl end up with a kid? Now, at this point, we wind the clock back, right? We kind of jump back here a little bit. If you guys recall, at a previous point in time. There was a conflict that took place and Monster Girl and Robot basically ended up in the dimension of the Thraxans. And remember, time passes differently there. Time does not pass the same way it does here on Earth. So years within the realm of Thraxan is only moments on Earth. And so that's why as things start to pop off, right? Once they're, once we kind of jump back to the point when they were whisked away to the world of the Thraxans, that basically what ended up happening is, of course, they were taken prisoner right off the bat. And the funny thing is that Monster Girl constantly breaks free of her confinement. The reason being because when they chained her up, they basically had chains for Monster Girl. They didn't have chains for her when she was like
like a normal human girl. So basically she just shrinks down back into her human form and she's too small for her chains and then she basically gets out. But no one can really understand how it is as she's basically making her escape. And so as time passes, remember, this basically happens over the over over just huge time periods, right? Like what would normally be what we consider to be like a day or something like that, like it's decades for these guys, right? Just huge amounts of time pass. And so what is it taking place is that at some point Monster Girl actually gets close enough to attack the uh the Thraxon royal family, which is technically the Zaxal royal family, but she basically attacks the royal family. And when that happens, because she got so close, it's obvious they can't keep them chained up in some dungeon somewhere. And so what they end up doing is basically sending them off to what's essentially the capital city. Now, this references issue number three of Invincible, where if you guys recall that Omni-Man during the first initial Thraxon invasion actually followed them back through the portal and then showed back up again, saying that they were just never going to be much of a threat again. We basically ended up getting the kind of continuation of that story in a separate issue where he basically trashed the whole place, right? Where he literally destroyed their capital city and basically left a message, do not come back. Of course, the Thraxons ended up coming back multiple times leading to this particular encounter here. But Rex, we can just kind of call him Rex now instead of Robot. He has this really genius idea because huge amounts of time has basically passed, right? 20 years, 30 years, which from their perspective, or at least as far as their aging process goes, is basically mere moments. He's been working on this gigantic plan that the way the Flaxons work and the reason why they invade other dimensions is because they basically need other sources of labor, right? Just different things to do. And so because of that, the idea of the capital city being destroyed by what they perceive to be a human, that it's only accurate from their perception that a human be sent to the capital city, or at least humans be sent to the capital city to basically rebuild it. The plot and the plan of Rex is genius, that the actions of Omni-Man will have spread throughout the entire Flaxen Empire by now. Everybody will have known of the Earthling who came to the Flaxen world and destroyed their home city. Even if they're not brave enough to act on it, to rebel or anything like that, that story is there. And that over time, because of the fact that, that Monster Girl and Rex don't age at the same rate that the Flaxens do, they, they can basically build for much, much longer. So while they're being guarded essentially day and night, and they're the only ones who are really here working on anything, while it's meant to be a, a kind of punishment, they actually plan on improving the capital city. And that as the capital city improves, and as the royal family begins to realize, okay, we can actually do something here, they'll start sending more prisoners to this location. And that what will happen as time progresses, keep in mind, this takes place over generations, right? But what Rex wants to do here is basically rebuild the entirety of the city, but also build things like underground bunkers. More so than that, plant the seeds of revolution among the various servants and slaves here because their numbers will grow. As time passes and because the royal family is very full of hubris, because they believe their rule is absolute, they'll never begin to realize that the forces of these prisoners, right, these slaves, will actually outnumber the forces of the guards because they believe that the authority of the guards is enough to keep the slaves in check. And so in effect, Rex is building a rebel faction. He's building what are essentially insurgents, a giant rebel force that will overthrow the entirety of the Thraxian royal army. And so that's exactly what happens. That because they often work in secret, they work underground, they have these little tunnels that no one's supposed to know about. They've been amassing weapons, arms, armament, different things along those lines. And in turn, when the time comes, they launch their assault, right? They launch their assault on the royal army. And this fight goes on for like a hundred years. It goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. It goes on for quite some time. But during all of this, right, during a lot of these things that are happening, a lot of deals are being made, right? A lot of glad handings going on, which is something that you have to expect when you have like a particular ruling family ruling over large numbers of groups, right? If my memory serves me correctly, with something like the Roman Empire, for example, one of the big things that led to the collapse of the Roman Empire was its inability to maintain its size, right? It literally collapsed under its own weight. The, the, this little bit of a fraction here, a little bit of a fracture there, basically led to its collapse. But the important thing here is this, <laughs> that making deals, right? Having factions work alongside you who wouldn't work with you before, all for the purpose of taking down the royal army, basically expands the forces of this rebel faction. It makes them more powerful, all of which is done under the guise that we will destroy, we'll take out the royal family, and then when that's done, we will organize everything from there. And so this conflict rages, but during this whole time where the conflict is raging, Rex begins to grow more and more distant, right? He begins to kind of break away more and more distant, and it's small little rifts that form between him and Monster Girl, that here initially, they're basically allies with maybe a little bit of love interest thrown in there, but the more time they spend together and 
and the more time they realized they're the only ones they can really rely on, that a romance began to blossom. But this romance was complicated by the fact that Monster Girl cannot understand the Thraxan royal language. She spent 300 years trying to understand it, and she just can't grasp it. That her inability to understand what it is that Rex is saying when he's in a room with other Thraxans makes her feel isolated and alone. That there are times when they share somewhat romantic and intimate moments together, and then in turn, a guy a guy comes in and basically says like, the scouting party's assembled, right? We'll leave as soon as you're ready. And he's like, cool, let's go. And basically just takes off, right? The whole moment is basically ended. What is, what's happening here is that because of her own inability to cope in the environment that she's in, as well as the actions of Rex himself, that Monster Girl is feeling isolated. She's feeling removed. She's feeling left out. Now, because this is one of those things where they try to sort of rekindle this romance and they even make love for the first time, right? They have like an intimate moment with each other. Now, when that happens, it sort of brings things back, right? It brings things back. And the reason why is because when they were here, right? When they initially launched this whole campaign, it was the Thraxons are bad guys because they invade other dimensions and we have to stop the royal family because they're the main bad guys. And like, that'll basically be it. It was superhero antics, right? It was just nothing really special. But with them being together intimately like that and then forming that bond, the motivation behind why they're engaged in this conflict is not to just cast off the Thraxon royal family. Now it's to live a life together, right? That they have no intention of leaving the Thraxon in the world, they plan on staying here for as long as they possibly can. And it would probably be maybe half a million years, right? I mean, like literally it's been a few hundred years at this point and they barely aged today. And so it's one of those things where like they could be here for quite some time, but the, the personal motivation for them to be together, right? To have a life together for as long as possible, ruling as presumably king and queen, or at the very least as, as two people who freed an entire dimension and would likely be hailed as heroes. It's very alluring. And so eventually the conflict comes comes to an end. The war's over, right? Those slave races that wanted to return to their dimensions are allowed to, but most of them didn't. That most of them had basically been there for like generations and they saw no reason to leave. And so one of the things that kind of goes on here is that Monster Girl shows a kind of affection towards the Flaxen race. Those individuals who are prisoners, but they're being abused by the, the guards themselves, that she sees it as something that doesn't need to happen, right? That just because they conquered a civilization doesn't mean they have to abuse that civilization. And in Indeed, that's actually the proper way to do things, right? The best way to basically take down an opposing force is to give the people that that force rules, to give them a reason to leave, right? To give them a reason to basically make the argument, you're better here than you are there, right? It's the Ronald Reagan, what is it? Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter presidential debate from the 1980s, right? Is your life better off now than it was four years ago. That's basically what you would be doing here, right? Like you would literally be creating this environment where it's your life is better under our rule than it was under theirs. And that's in turn how you rally them to your cause. Assuming of course they have the courage to do anything about their terrible life. But Rex is looking at all this and, and from his perspective, the kind of affection she showed towards the Thraxons, that's the thing that should have concerned him, right? That's the thing that should have worried him, but he didn't think about that at the time. Instead, once the conflict was over and the war was done, they were championed, right? People saw them is just like the ones who basically ended everything. And as a result of that, Rex is actually elevated to basically becoming the leader of the new Thraxon race. And what he starts to do with Amanda at his side, right? With Monster Girl at his side, what they start doing is ushering in this era of peace that for a time, things are great here. Right, things are phenomenal here, but then small little rifts begin to form yet again. One of the most notable here is that due to her compassionate nature, which is actually the thing that's causing problems here, Amanda looks at what it is that Rex is doing and basically keeping the royal family interred, right? Keeping them locked away in prisons where they have been for the last 15 years and saying like, they're never going to, they're never gonna leave, right? Like maybe we'll let them out at some future point in time when they pay their debt to society, but that's basically it. I mean, in reality, the smartest thing for him to have done would have been to execute him. Like if what you're looking to do is to depose and replace a ruling family, you kill them. You take them out. That way you never have to worry about them coming back. And if you've done your job correctly and basically getting most, if not all of society to turn against that ruling family, no one's going to oppose you. You've got society on your side. Society becomes your army, right? The average person becomes your spy. It's exactly what McCarthy did in the 19, what is the 1950s, 1960s with McCarthyism, right? Like if you see something, say something, that kind of a thing, right? You turn 
turn society into your weapon. Because of the fact that Rex is basically building a civilization, it doesn't really leave him a lot of time to focus on Amanda the way she wants to be focused on. Now, I mean, what's more important here, right? Like the girl you're with or building an entire society? That's left to interpretation. But Amanda can't really seem to get past the fact that Rex building a society means he doesn't have a whole lot of time for her. And so in the end, when a person in a relationship feels neglected, eyes begin to wonder. And that's exactly what happens. Because Amanda comes running in, again, after some huge period of time, that where it was believed the Thraxan royal family, the Zaxels, would be allowed to basically go out and do their thing. That what's happened here is something called the Zaxel Work Classification Act was passed, which basically prevents them from being able to integrate into society. Because the biggest fear that Rex has is if the royal family is allowed to integrate into society, they'll start sowing the seeds of revolution, despite everything he's done to ensure that society would basically be on his side. And so because of this, Amanda hates the idea that basically the royal family is being kept in turn. They're hidden away, right? They're basically being denied freedoms that any normal Thraxid would normally get that in effect, either Rex needs to like kill them or let them back out there into the world. Now, of course, she's not necessarily in favor of him killing them, but she sees his actions as cruel and unusual. And so what ends up happening is that some of the royal family actually end up getting guards or getting jobs basically working in mines in order to like feed their kids and different things like that. And that the guards there know that there's really nowhere else for this royal family to go. So they basically beat and mistreat them, right? They treat them like slaves because where else are they going to go, right? And so Monster Girl actually ends up stepping in and basically faces off against some of these guys. And then of course has a, a little bit of a moment with one of the members of the royal family. And that's kind of it. Now this creates a gigantic rift between herself and Rex because from Rex's perspective, he's the authority here that her going forward and engaging in an act like that undermines his entire authority. It basically makes it look like he can't even control his own house. And if he can't control his own home, what hope could he possibly have to control an entire kingdom? It makes him look inept. And so because of that, he basically begins to lash out at Amanda and then sends her away. And so in that time, they do kind of make up a little bit. They do sort of reconcile, but there's this distance that wasn't there before. And the writing is essentially on the wall, right? The writing's there. It's just neither one of them are really paying attention, but like it's basically over. But like try as they might, they try to reconcile here and there. But in the end, it always keeps coming back to these problems, these irreconcilable differences that there are individuals out there that were loyal to the uh, to the Zaxel or to the Flaxen royal family that Rex will not give any rights to. That he doesn't see them as people who deserve rights because they did so many heinous things, which could be a justifiable argument. Now, the other part of this, and this is where the nature of being an effective leader becomes significantly important. It's one thing to have the people on your side. It's another to keep them there. And that in the end, right, wrong, or otherwise, people rely on the government to basically keep them protected, right? That's what Rex is running into here. That Rex is running into a situation where resources are scarce. Now, the reality is that resources are scarce because the flax and people, as you normally see in a time of peace, just start procreating with reckless abandon, right? Just start popping out kids all over the place with no real thought to how those kids are going to get fed, right? It's just sort of this kind of back of the mind thought that, well, the government will take care of it, right? And that's basically it. But when, when reality starts to set in and it's you guys had way too many kids there's basically too many people and not enough resources then suddenly it turns into well it's the government's fault right which is usually how it works whenever it comes to any kind of a uh, organized society that the citizens of that society rarely ever take accountability for their own actions instead it's always somebody else's fault and so there really is fault all around here because rex did not anticipate this more so than that what he's running into is the exact same thing that the royal family went into that's the reason why the Flaxons started invading other dimensions in the first place because basically the citizenry were giving no real thought to how much they were procreating, how many kids they were having. They were creating their own problem and then blaming the royal family for it. So the royal family had to do something. And that's where Amanda's kind of like, I mean, look, we could basically go to other dimensions. We don't have to launch an attack. We don't have to invade them, but we can have some kind of system set up where like we offer something, they offer something that is basically a bargaining system, right? That is it's essentially just kind of an exchange system. I mean, if anything, it'd be true communism <laughs> when it gets down to it. But, you know, we basically have a system where we exchange goods for services or other goods. But the response of Rex is, no, that's not going to happen. So what it does is exactly what you would think it would. It leads to basically the descendants, Zol and Zal, who are part of the uh, part of the Zaxel royal family, basically attacking uh, Rex. And then in turn, when Rex says, no, like I lead entire legions of forces, there's no way you're going to take my, my entire kingdom from me. He tells Monster Girl to attack and she says no and a fight breaks out between the two of them and she allies herself with the royal family against rex 
And so once the royal family basically reseizes control, that what Monster Girl does, and sort of a weird, interesting thing here, she basically falls in love with another woman, turns into her monster form, and then sleeps with her, right? And basically gets this girl knocked up. And so the entire time that Rex is basically held in this prison, there eventually comes a point when Monster Girl seemingly breaks him out. And then from there, Rex ends up retaking the entirety of the empire himself, right? Casting everybody out. Now, seemingly, uh, Monster Girl does this out of guilt, right? That basically she cheated on. Him. And so the reality is that when she reveals this, when she says like, I stepped out on you, I'm sorry, I made a horrible mistake, that in the end, he doesn't give her any real benefit of the doubt. He just basically walks away from her. You know, when she's like begging for forgiveness, she's like, I'm sorry, he just doesn't say anything and essentially just leaves. The other thing here, what Rex doesn't know is that she got the woman pregnant. And so it's as weird as it sounds, <laughs> Amanda turning into Monster Girl basically means she's got like the dude parts and then got one of the Thraxen women pregnant. And so in response to that, because of the fact that their life is seemingly falling apart and because his relationship with Amanda is more important than him basically being a leader, that he actually ends up telling her like, I've chosen my successor. We're out of here, right? Like this has just been too much. It's, it's taken too much of a toll on us. You mean more to me than this whole thing. I'm going to leave this thing in capable hands. We're going to walk away and that's going to be the end of that. And so that's what leads to that moment when Monster Girl and Rex show back up inside the universe where, you know, where Invincible takes place. Now, there is a super important thing here. Of course, the son of Monster Girl and Rex is basically defeated. He's not killed. He's actually taken away and basically held as a prisoner, which, you know, Monster Girl tries to talk to and he doesn't really want to have anything to do with her. And that's, that's basically it. But an important thing here, there's two major things that happen here. The first is that you actually end up having a moment where Freddie Mercury meets with Craig. And the idea here is that Craig was basically instructed to procreate with humanity, but not to interact with humanity, right? Not to do anything that would like save them or hurt them or anything like that, right? To basically do what he could to ensure that like the Viltrumites wouldn't be noticed, but they could increase their numbers. Craig, as essentially Omni-Man and, and Mark had predicted, has basically began to fall in love with humanity as a whole, but he's also got a woman in London that he's in love with, right? That he very much likes to be here on this world, that he's still essentially loyal Oil to Freddie Mercury as much as he can be, but now he has something to lose. He's going in the direction of Omni-Man. The other big thing that happens here, and this is huge, is that back on the Thraxen world, before they left, when Rex was told by one of the guys, right, that was out there, that uh, that it turns out that one of the members of the Zaxel royal family is with child, right? The Zaxel rebel basically appears to be pregnant, that in turn, Rex tells Amanda to excuse him for a second. And then he starts speaking with the rest of the staff in Thraxen in case Amanda overhears because remember she can't understand the language and he says like okay so it's true somehow she managed to procreate with one of the Thraxens uh okay like it doesn't matter right if you know where they are I want you to hunt them down all of them I want their entire bloodline erased every Zaxel royal is to be gathered and executed there is to be no quarter given there is to be made no exception man woman, child, all of them including that unborn half-breed that grows within that traitorous Zaxel belly. Kill Monster Girl's kid. With that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. Pretty bleak ending. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.